These are my bags. I've got a think tank. That's for the cameras. This is my flash bag. Okay, so that's for all the flashes that we'll use today. There are four of them in there. And then here's the stand bag. That's it. That's the gear. And I can, I can carry and roll all of these. So I can zip this thing like this. So that's one, right? And then I've got this one that I can put on my shoulder. So that, that's it. I can, I can do most anything I need to do with this. Okay, now, yesterday we, yesterday we did some basic lighting inside, right? We had soft boxes and we talked about the, what the soft box will do versus a harder light. And we talked about matching light with the window light and things like that, right? So we, we got some of those basics out of the way and we saw how big and bulky all the stuff that we would be taking with us. And to top that off, if I were taking a big soft box with me onto location, I would also need about 80 pounds worth of sandbags to make sure that they're not blowing all over the place, right? So, that's pretty small in comparison, right? All right, so, now let's look in the bags. So, I'm gonna need a cameraman over here, and we're gonna go in nice and close. Let's start with the camera bag. Now, the important thing about all bags is that each bag is self-contained. So I can take just this bag, and I can, with just the bag, I can do everything I need to do without major flash equipment, okay? So I don't have things separated out into different bags that I have to take five bags to do one thing. So if I'm just going to take like a little baby portrait somewhere in someone's house, or if I'm going to photograph just an event somewhere or whatever, all I need is this bag. So when I open the bag, first on the very top, I have my spider holster, right? Because otherwise, I'll forget this if it's not in the actual bag. So I put it right here so that I have it. So when I open up, I can strap that on. Okay, so now, and by the way, these think tanks are awesome because you can lock them. And they have a cable on the back here that you can lock it to something that's in mobile. So yeah, someone could clip the cord and run away with it but just your average whoever is not gonna be running around with a cord cutter. So it's a pretty excellent bag. Okay. So when I open up the bag, you're gonna see first on the top out here, I have business cards in there, pens, emergency vitamin supplements, <laughs> a, a lens cloth, um, some lip balm, <laughs> you know, just random things. <coughs> In here, I have change for a parking meter, right? Yeah. Great How many idea. times do you get somewhere and you need to park and you don't have any change in your pocket or yeah. the car? Yeah. That's there. A little flashlight. And then here, I've got some AAA batteries, a gel that can go over my flash. Of course, that's the old style of gel. I don't, I'll show you new gels in a minute that are even better. Um, and then, oh, this is a, an insert for a, it's, so if you have the wrong size screw for the tripod, like you get a tripod mount that's bigger, you can put that in. So just all the little knickknacks that you might need, a cable to connect the camera, shutter release cables, a screwdriver, you know, all that kind of stuff. A compass, mm, that's great. just in case my iPhone compass is freaking out, because sometimes it doesn't really work. So I've got a compass there. Okay, so that's that. Now, come on in here with this, and you'll see that I've got two cameras. I actually hate having two different cameras. I used to use a Pro Body and then a, Mark II, a 5D Mark II, but I hated the fact that when I pulled up one, it was different than the other. I need to know my camera like the back of my hand, and so I have two Mark III's. I have one with the, the battery grip on it, and then, of course, a spider holster on it. And then I have one just small. Okay, and so the, both of them can hang on my hip during a wedding. Um, but they're the same. They're, everything's exactly the same on them. They're all programmed the same. So that every time I pull up a camera, it's the same. It, I know exactly where the, the settings are. I know exactly what the buttons are doing because they're exactly the same. So that's my preference. I know that that's not 
always um, doable because you know you're using your old camera as the second camera and then you're buying a new camera. But if you have the ability to get to the point where you have the same cameras, it's very useful, especially when we're ta considering shooting in an efficient manner. If you know your camera well enough and you're not swap swapping between the two, then you'll be more efficient. Okay, um, and then if you look here, there's one flash. Remember, I need to be completely self-contained, so I have a flash and a transmitter for that flash so that I can take this flash off of camera and I can transmit with that. So these flashes are the new Canon 600EX RT flash. And then the transmitter is the new Canon STE, uh, STE 3RT. And it's got a little computer right on here where I can control this flash and all the flashes in my other bag. Okay, from the camera. All right, so that, this all goes in this little pocket here so that if I'm going somewhere and I'm just gonna use one flash, all I have to take is this bag. I've got my 2470 uh, Mark II lens, which is much better than the original lens. I've got a 50 1.2. Right below that, I have an 85 1.8. And by the way, this 1.2 is a super sharp lens. Right? And so I like it. It's very expensive. It's, it's the expensive, you know, Mother 50 <laughs> lens. This one, 85, 1 1.8, is not very expensive and super sharp. Absolutely great lens. I love this lens. So I've never even thought about going to the, the 85, 1.2 because it's super expensive and I love this lens. So, All right, let's see. What else do I have in here? 100 millimeter, okay, so this is a macro, so I don't have to have, I used to have, and I still, still have them in here, some close-up rings, but now I use that macro, so I don't necessarily need them, but see how they're below other things, and then I've got card cases, I've got an extra one of these, and I actually have extra, so underneath the long lens, I have a little compartment here, and that's got all of my tools. So it's got this, which is a, it's a, to screw on my, my, my uh, spiders. I also have this, which this is really curious because it has a knife on it, and somehow it got through security. <laughs> <laughs> so that's nice. interesting, Lucky. if the TSA is watching. Lucky. I oh. beat you. <laughs> So, um, I, we have a pilot in the audience. She's like, I can't believe it. I'm in such danger. <laughs> yeah. Extra lens caps. Those are a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, extra lens caps, screwdrivers, um, plates for my tripod. I have five plates for tripods because I lose these all the time. Okay. Oh, and lens cleaner and stuff like that. Okay, so that's what we have underneath in the little secret gear compartment that even the TSA can't discover. <laughs> so, I need to remember to put that into my, my uh, non-carry-on bag. Oh, and, and a charger for my batteries. So, everything's self-contained, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to our um, flash bag. In the flash bag, we have everything that we need for the flashes, so that if all I did was take those two, I could still use all of that. I would need to put them somewhere, but they would be able to, this functions on its own. I don't necessarily need stands. Like if I go on a baby portrait to someone's house, I don't have to bring these stands. I can just set little lights all over and pound them off of like white walls and ceilings and stuff like that and get a couple direct ones. And I don't actually need anything but this. Okay, so I open this one up, and I have four compartments. See if you can look in there. See that? So we've got four compartments in there. Each one holds a flash. Okay, I have the flashes preloaded with their batteries. When I get home from an event, I just pop all the batteries and charge them. I've got in the second compartment in the front, I have the little stands, the little foot stands for them, and also... I have a 
another battery pack. So this holds eight batteries. This is the CPE3. They have a newer one now, but it holds eight batteries. Plug it in, so then you end up with 12 batteries running the flash. So if all you had was the money to buy one flash, then you would want a flash, an extra battery pack, so you have more batteries so that it's, it's revving it up faster and it's, you've got longer life on it, and one of these. And you can do some pretty amazing stuff with one flash, and I'll show you that in a minute. Then also, in the front, along with these, we have a bunch of filter holders. So these filter holders are pretty cool. They're brand new with this uh, 600 flash series. You hold the filters in here, you put the filters in here. And I'll show you how to do this, so zoom in on me here. So here is a filter. Here's the holder. You simply slide this into the flash holder, and so it, it will hit these, there's little slats in there that you throw it through, and then you clip it here, like that, on these little clips. And then it just simply, oh, that one has a rubber band on it, hold on. So you simply put it on the top of this, like that, and click it in, and now you've got a filter on your camera. So the, and you, you can, they, they have all sorts of filters, so you can put a blue filter in there, you can put an orange filter in there, you can even put a diffusing filter in there. So these are awesome little filter holders, and I have one for each flash, just in case we want to you know, warm something up. Okay? So that's the flash bag, and then of course I can put batteries and battery chargers right in here. Okay? So, remember, everything has to be self-contained. So if I'm taking this bag, I need to have a battery charger in it. My battery charger's on the wall right now, charging batteries, so it's not in the bag. But it would be if I'm leaving this building. Okay. Let's see. Now we're going to go to our stand bag, which is pretty basic, having a stand bag, right? But we're going to make sure that everything that we need is in or attached to the, bands, uh, the stand bag. So I have a little attachment here that just hangs off of it. Unzip this. This is made uh, by Strobies. It's a little soft box. So if I want a little bit bigger flash, that's that. Claps is pretty small, but it's pretty light. Then I have on the, on the side of this thing, I have a place where I can put hardware to attach it to different stands or to different things, um, including things like this. So this is just an arm so that once I put it on a stand, I can bend this flash down. It'll give me angles. So we'll end up using that. And we'll pull out our... This is what the flash attaches to and then goes into here. So I'm going to show you how to put that on right now. Simply take this, and we kind of squeeze it into these hands here that are holding it. And now that holds the, the soft box. And then we take our flash, and notice that I've actually put an A on this flash. So this is going to be group A. So I always know by looking at the front of the flash which group it's in. And when I turn it on, I have assigned this flash to be group A. And I'll tell you more about groups in a minute. So I just simply slide this into the holder, to the shoe. Make sure that it's actually seated correctly here so that it's looking into the flash. Soft box, tighten it up, and now I have a flash that's on this. And I have Velcro right here at the bottom, so I can take my extra power, and I can stick it on here. And now this is going to be attached, and I can attach it to the flash. And now I have self-contained flash that I can either put on a monopod for an assistant to hold and move around really quickly, or I can put it on a stand. Okay? So that's pretty simple, easy. And think about what you could do with food photography with that. That's brilliant. Right? You can do so much with that. Great. And you can put your 
gels on there so that you could warm something up or cool it down or soften it even more. But that is a really great way. To, I do ring shots with this all the time. Of course, I do ring shots at weddings with uh, iPhones and iPads, too. <laughs> take the, you just take a white screen on the iPad, and that becomes your soft box. And then you take like the, so when you're shooting a ring shot, I know this is off topic, but this is a good idea. Yeah. Um, I'll show you a, a photo from this. Actually, I think I have it. Hold on. Light. There we go. That's shot completely with iPhones and iPads. Really? So the iPad is the main light source or the soft box, and it's off here, and that's what's lighting up the front of the rings nice and white. And then the blue light coming forward, that's a, a, an app, an, a flashlight app that can change colors. And so the entire iP the iPad, or iPod, no, the iPhone, the mm -hmm. iPhone is all blue light. And that's coming from the back here. And then if you see, there's a little bit of warm light over here. So there's my assistant's iPhone has red on his. <laughs> and it's coming this way. So that's where you're getting this kind of light. And then we have one more iPhone that's you always need a sparkler when you're shooting jewelry. So an eye, like just a soft box doesn't give you sparkles in the jewels because it's too soft and it's too, it doesn't have as much direct light. So then you take your, your iPhone and you go to your, your flashlight and you turn on that, the little, the little LED flashlight on the, on the back, and that becomes the sparkler. So it, it nails, and you just kind of off to the side here in order to get a little bit of sparkle in those diamonds and kind of get them to pop. That's it. So we just <laughs> we put the camera on the tripod because it takes time, and then you can, it's maybe like a second exposure or half a second exposure, and you just you have all those set up, and then you just take the shot. And sometimes if you want to get even you know, more of a wrap, you can take the iPad and go like this during the exposure. <laughs> and so it'll kind of give you more of, it'll look like a bigger softbox than it really was because you're moving the iPad while you go. So iPads and iPhones are great for little tabletop shots. <laughs> That's brilliant. FYI. You know, <laughs> so. Okay, so back to the topic at hand. Mm. So here's a typical monopod, just doesn't matter what it is, just a monopod but I have a head on it. And the reason you want the head on it is so that if your assistant is going to take one of your flashes and put it onto the monopod, whether it's on a softbox or whether it's just bareheaded, you uh, just slide it on here, tighten it up, and the head allows you, although I have the head a little bit, hold on, have this skewed. Anyway, the head allows you to bend it down and up so that you can, you know, so that he doesn't have to be going like this. He can just be standing like that. And he can just drop this down. And now he's got an angle on that without having to hold it. So my brother, who's my chief assistant um, on photo shoots, he, I used to have a stand that was only this long. And so he would always have to be like this. <laughs> And he would just be burning by the end of the photo shoot. And so I just got this, like, I don't know, a year ago. And it, when, he, when he saw it, he's like, why in the world didn't we have this for all the years that I was doing this? <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Uh, so this one goes pretty high. Like, you can, so you can. What kind is that, Jared? It's called a, a G-I-O-T-T-O-S. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Giotos? Giotos? I don't know. But that's pretty high. And then if for some reason he needs to, he can just do this. Or he can put it in his belt like this. And, you know, it's pretty simple to light something up that way. So, so that's, that's if you have an assistant that can move around rapidly, just a monopod's the best thing to have. If you don't have an assistant, then what you want is these kind of, these are called cheetah stands. So when you set them down, they just automatically open up. Hold on. This is the one that doesn't. The 
little foot fell out. Okay, so they just open up. See that? So when you pick them up, and then you set them down. So that allows me, as a photographer, to come into the shoot, add my light, into the foot here, <coughs> tighten it up. And now I can just walk around with this. <laughs> <laughs> or throw it. Oh. Whoops. So you need to tighten it up. <laughs> just, you know, that's probably a good idea. So I would have yelled at an assistant for that, <laughs> but I won't yell at myself. So there you go. So this is what I'm doing when I'm shooting all by myself. I just have this up here like that. Take it with me. I've got my camera on my hip. Walk around. Set it down. Walk away. Shoot. Okay. So it's very easy to, to walk. You no know assistant needed. You've got one light. If we want two lights, we just simply start setting up another light. Yeah, question. Okay, so I just did a photo shoot in a very busy, very small, cramped kitchen in Spain. And there really was no place I could set up a tripod without tri people tripping on it. Right. And I didn't have an assistant. Um, do you have any suggestions or just yes. somewhere in between? So, if I were in a kitchen, I would find a shelf up high oh. and I would set it up there. That's like a that. great idea. Okay. okay. And then if you're, if you're in tricky spots, you could also make a third bag, a little bag that has clamps. And these are lightweight. So if you just got yourself a clamp and so like just get a, a head like this mm -hmm. and get yourself a clamp that has a, a, a standard photo post in it, mm -hmm. clamp it to whatever you want up there and then mount this to here. Oh, that's great. Right? So just mount it to a clamp. I have, I have a whole bag at home full of clamps. So that if I'm in a situation where all I have is a post up there, like if there's, there's a drain or something like that, or a, a telephone post or something like that, I can clamp it to something. And then I've got a light sitting on someone's post. That's great. Okay. There are also strap clamps that have, they have a post on them, and they're just a strap. So you just wrap the strap around any telephone post and strap it, and then because these are light enough, they'll hang on almost anything. That's great. Okay. Awesome. So just get your just go to a photo store and start looking for clamps and looking for like little tiny stands for okay. things. That's what you'd want. That's great. Yeah. How much is one of those lighting kits? Just one light and a stand. So if I were only getting a one light stand and a transmitter, you'd want a transmitter to go with it, then you'd be running a little over $600 for the flash. This stand is like 70 bucks, 50 to 70 bucks, something like that. And then this one is about half the cost of the flash. So you're in it for less than about $1,000 and you have a really great lighting system. And then as you have the capital to do so, you start adding lights. I didn't develop this immediately. I mean, I developed it pretty quick because these are only less than a year old, but I developed it over a series of months. So I'd buy one, and then I bought another, and then I bought another. So as I had the capital to buy them, I would buy a couple more or one more until now I have five, which to me is overkill, <laughs> but it's awesome. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, so this bag is really overkill. You can do a lot with just one. So let me just prove that to you. Ryan, can you come in and set all this stuff up? Let me show you some work. We're going to go to our speed light. So everything here that I show you was, I'm going to come over this way, I guess. <coughs> so that, can you guys all see that? Mm -hmm. OK. So I'm going to show you images that were um, taken with speed lights. Now, this first image was not taken with a speed light. This image was taken with just a reflector. So all we had was light bouncing off the train, and then mom and sister were on the photo shoot with us, so I had them stand in front of the camera so that I could use them as people walking around in the train station. 
and it, it's an abandoned train station, so there's nobody there, so <laughs> I needed people to make it look busy. And then I have a, a stand over here, because I'm the only other person here, so I have a stand over here with just a reflector that's taking the light that's barreling down through the corridor of the trains, and it's pushing light back onto her, and that's it. So just having a reflector with you is not a very expensive lighting tool, and it can do a lot for you. So just remember that. If you have no money for something like this, a reflector can sometimes do the job of a flash if you have enough sun hitting it. It just requires an assistant, which if you're going to pay an assistant on a regular basis, you're going to afford a flash really quickly. Have you used the, the little reflectors you pop into the top of the flash that bend over like the little squares? Oh. Have you tried yeah, those? Yeah, those, the whale tails and yeah. the, yeah, I have, I actually have, over here I have a, uh, and do you carry a Gary reflector? Fong thing. Um, so this thing right here is great when you're, you have to have your flash on camera. It'll help diffuse that light. And if you take the top off of it, then you, most of the light ends up bouncing off the ceiling or off the wall if it's facing this way. But a little bit of the light goes forward to put catch lights in the eyes and to kind of make sure that there's no like, you know, like raccoon eyes or whatever. And so those, that, those are useful for when you have something on camera. But once you go off camera, those, that doesn't, that's no longer <coughs> necessary. I mean, you could still use it off camera, but it's no longer <coughs> necessary. Because now you can actually, you can actually um, manipulate your light much more subtly when you're moving your flash around. And because you remember, the only, when we want to fool, remember yesterday we talked about the concept of hiding our hand. We, we want it to look like it's real. We're manipulating the crap out of the light, but we want it to look like it's just natural. So when you move something off camera, so if your flash is here and you're here, the mind doesn't think that's a flash. The mind thinks that's a natural occurring light somewhere. And then if you put other flashes around that help to mimic that, the mind will even think more that it's a naturally occurring light. So, one flash on this. So this shot, and this is in the absolute heat of the day, Arizona sun, bright, bright light. When the sun shines in Arizona, it shines. <laughs> By the way, it's, it's rainy outside. For those of you who are not here at the studio, it's rainy outside, it's cold, and so we are pretending that we're outside today. So if you look up here, we've got this really bright light. That's what my Arizona sun is like, constantly. And so as soon as it comes through the clouds, you can see that it creates a shadow here. See that shadow that's coming this way on, the, on, on Kevin? This is, this is Kevin Burdick, one of the guys on Triple Scoop Music. So you see the shadow here, but there's the, cloud is, the clouds have separated and allowed the sun to come through to create this. And so we've got a really bright, sunny day beautiful clouds behind us, but if I had shot this without a flash, this side of his face would be completely dark. So it would be way too contrasty. So all I simply do is set him there, and then I've got the flash right here. Okay, so, but the, remember the flash is always on the side of the sun. So it's actually, the flash is hitting him on the right side of the face, and the left side of the face. But because the sun is more powerful than the flash, it doesn't matter what hits him on the right side of the face. And it's only filling the left side of the face because the, the light that's hitting him on the right side of the face is already more powerful. And so it's filling in here and giving us a little bit extra light. But it's just one light filling in that shadow. Okay, So one light. I've got a sun that's way over there rippling across her hair. So off her left shoulder, back behind her, the sun is coming through, right? And so that's creating this little crest of light on her leg. It's creating a crest of light on her shoulder and on her hair. And you can even see it kind of coming through onto her face um, right here. You can see it coming through on her face right there. See that? So that's the sun. But my flash is over here just filling in. Less powerful than the sun, and so you as a viewer don't think that's flash. You just think that that's 
whatever light was spilling onto her from the northern sky. Okay? So, one flash. So I've got her in a forest. She's on her piano. We lugged a piano into the forest. So we've got her on the piano in the forest. The sun is filtering down through the trees, and it's giving a crest of light on the top of her hat and on her shoulder and through her hair here. And all I have to do is grab a flash and put it off to the... So if we're looking at her, it's off to my right just a little bit and way up high, and it's coming through. And the only telltale sign that there's a flash is that there's a little bit of a shadow on her face from that piece of hair. See that? But it looks like a piece of hair. It's a tiny shadow. But it, see, it looks like a piece of hair, but it's actually a shadow of this piece of hair. So we get away with it, even though it, it looks like it could be a piece of hair, but it's really a shadow. But that's it. That's the only telltale sign, because it's weaker than the light that's coming across here. So we just kind of disregard it. Our eye will always go to the stronger light. And so our eyes will always see the light source as being the thing that's stronger. So if you have weaker flashes filling in, and they're not really going beyond the sunlight, then all is good. You, it won't look like a flash. Okay. One flash, come into the bride's room, she's getting ready, I walk in, I've got one of these lights, don't have stands, I just have a light, I put a little foot on it, set it on the desk that's over to my right, pound it against the wall, kind of up, so, so if I'm looking at her, so we're in the room right now, and that's where she is, and right here there's a desk to my right and to her left, and I set it on the desk and I point it at the wall, kind of up to the wall and the ceiling, and it's pointing towards her a little bit, so when it hits, it makes a 45-degree bounce to hit her. And what happens is you get a nice bit of light coming across here, but remember, I want, so I've got this nice light coming from behind her, because I've matched, I walked into the room. Remember yesterday, we walk into the room, we first get the ambient light, then we add a flash. So I come in, I expose for the ambient light, which is this stuff, I want this to look nice and bright and airy. And then I add my flash just to give some volume to her and light up the interior of the room. And so you can see, there's the telltale sign of the flash, right? There. See that shadow? That pillow is casting a shadow on this pillow right here. That's the telltale sign of the flash. But because it comes from over there and not where I am, the mind doesn't think of it as a flash. It thinks of it as another window that's over here. There's no window on this side of the room. There's only, the only window in the room is here. And yet, it looks like there's a window on this other side of the room. Yeah? I've had no Voma photography training, so can you please talk a little bit about how you know where to place glasses and now and where to angle them. Absolutely. When we shoot our models that come in today, we will talk all about that. We'll go into where we're going to place things based on the light that we come into. So yeah, we will get, and I think I see models. Awesome. Come on in. Jared, you don't have a reflector in your uh, bag? Uh, no, because I very rarely use a reflector. <laughs> if I have an assistant with me, He'll have the reflector with him, or it'll be in the trunk of the car. So if we need it, I can use it. But I'm not going to generally pull out the reflector first. Generally, I'm going to pull out a flash first. The, the problem with a reflector, do you guys model a lot? No? Somewhat? Have you ever, been, have you ever had someone use a reflector on you? <laughs> See, did you hear what she just said? Watch this. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to cause problems for our... Assistance here. I mean, see, isn't that isn't that enjoyable? See, look at watch watch her eyes. We can't see her. Okay, can you please open your eyes and look wonderful? So constant light sources like this are great because you see what you get, but they're not great for the person in the photograph. And so, I take a very different approach to photography all around, though, because when I come into a a portrait shoot, or I come into 
a corporate thing where I'm doing portraits for people or when I come into a wedding. I'm all about trying to make people feel natural and comfortable and because it's an experience as much as it is a photo shoot. And so I don't want people squinting. And you know what I hear every time I get the groomsmen to like get together and turn away from the sun? I say, turn away from the sun. They're all, thank you. And then they're happy because they're not squinting and they're not, you know? And I never use those because they're just too blinding. And if you are using them, you have to have the assistant go like this and then go, okay, pretend it doesn't hurt. Pretend it doesn't hurt, (laughs) right? But with a flash, it's only a momentary blink, so they don't even react to it. And we get the same amount of light. So you just have to be able to then, in your mind's eye, think what's going on.